booktube it's kim at middle of the book march and i'm coming to you today with a chatty video i just kind of this has been in my head since the beginning of october and i thought i can't be the only one but i was thinking about uh number one how little i read in october and why and number two what am i going to do about it there's i don't have to do anything about it but the, the topic of my conversation today is, what do you do when you're too distracted to read? Do you, what can you do? What happens when a whole month gets, gets away from you and you really didn't get any reading in, even though you love to do it, you enjoy it so much. So how do you read while distracted? So since the beginning of October, I had my surgery at the beginning of October and I was recovering for two weeks and I got COVID. So then I had to recover from COVID for a week and be sick and stay home. And all I wanted to do for that week was basically binge watch TV. So I was binge watching the Golden Girls. I think I'm still watching that, sorry. Um, and since November, I've been able to read a couple of things, but now I've got some family concerns going on that require my time and attention. So I don't necessarily have a lot of free time or energy to even do a lot of heavy reading, which is bothering me because I love to read. So what do you, what are my tactics for, for battling with distraction or energy drain or whatever it is? Um, I think first of all is to give myself a break. And any of you who are feeling the same way, give yourself a break because reading is not mandatory and you don't need to put that type of pressure on yourself. I know I don't need to do that. And there's no, there's no rules and there's no guidelines that says we have to read a certain amount every day or every week or every month. So give myself a break, shall I? And the same goes for you. If you really wanna read, but you just can't focus, do you have tactics? Do you have things that you can do to kind of jumpstart you? Or even if it's even if it's what you define as a reading slump, what do you do to get out of that? Uh, what do you do when you're so distracted that you know your mind is just spinning and you can't focus on a book, you can't focus on any one thing? So I'm gonna tell you and share with you some of the things that I have done over time to kind of get me to jumpstart myself back into regular reading so that I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm not, these books are in no particular order, by the way, but I don't read short stories very often, but if you have a limited attention span or limited time, reading short stories is a great way to read, to get in some reading. Um, so I have a, a few collections in my home. This one is Cynthia Ozick Collected Stories. And, you know, these are the types of things where you can just read a story and put the book down, or you can go back to it and open at a completely different section of the book and read another story. You can download stories off the internet. You can, uh, there are numerous short story collections to read. You can, you can read single stories on your e-reader. I do that a lot as well, and I found some really good ones. So short stories are a, gr are a great way to get the reading juices flowing and get back into reading regularly when you only have short bursts of time or attention. Um, reread something that you love. And this is a book that I hope to reread in December for the uh, Remember December Readathon. And this is The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. This has so many things going for it and because it's a reread, but it's also just pure fantasy. It can pull me out of my reality. It can pull my brain out of overdrive and suck me into Middle Earth and suck me into the Shire and to wizards and hobbits and elves and everything else and dragons and everybody else who's in this book. And it's just a perfect antidote to being consumed with problems or issues or health or whatever it is. So I really hope I can get to this um, in December because next year I want to get back to the Lord of the Rings. Read something funny, especially if they are essays. And this is David Sedaris, The Best of Me. David Sedaris makes me laugh out loud. 
and he's an essay writer and a, and a comic and kind of a chronicler of his daily life. So many books that he's written, so many collections, I just crack up. And it's so nice to read something and laugh, read something and smile, to just enjoy the story, enjoy the way it's told. And this is another type of a book where you can read one, put it down, go back, read another one, put it down. And you can give short bursts of time investments to a book like this. And if it makes you laugh, it's it's great. It's it's like the snake bite antidote. It's like an antidote to distraction and worry and uh, a bunch of too many thoughts rolling around in your brain. At least that's how I feel about it. Pick up a book that you've been dying to read for a long time. Now, this one I'm currently reading for Nonfiction November, and this is Say Nothing by Patrick Radden Keefe, A True Story of Murder and Memory in Northern Ireland. I've had this on my shelf forever. I picked it up for Nonfiction November. I, I am still, I haven't gotten much farther than I talked about previously, but I'm hooked. I can't wait to get back to this. And it's it's drawing me in because the, the topic is so interesting. The writing is amazing. And I this is something that when I when I see it on the, my, my table, I want to pick it up. I'm looking forward to picking up, even when I don't have a, a moment or time or the energy to do it. But I'm so looking forward to it. What's another one? Read something super short. There's plenty of shorties out there. Read poetry. Read a poetry collection. This book is super short. It's not that happy of a book, but it's very short and it's really good for nonfiction November. This is Darkness Visible by William Styron, um, a memoir of madness. This is his very short account of uh, major depression and how he discovered it, what he do did about it, how he came out of it. And it's, it's an excellent short book and very fast to read. Uh, don't read it if you think it's too depressing, but it is very short, and it's a small book, too. So um, pick any short book. Pick, you know, poetry collections, many of them are very slim, and poems are short most of the time. So they're great options if you really enjoy good poetry or beautiful language. So, it, you know, poetry a really good poetry collection has so many things going for it. Um, read a graphic novel or a graphic memoir. They go super fast. They're pictures with some text. Again, this is not, well, it's not that it's not happy, but it's not like cozy or anything. This is Marbles, um, a, a graphic memoir by Ellen Forney, Manic Depression, Michelangelo and Me. This is her graphic memoir about her mental health journey and what she was diagnosed with and how she coped with it and what she did afterwards and how, what, what, her life became and um, it's so good and it's all you know it's a graphic memoir so it's filled with pictures and all the pages you know are filled with pictures and text and graphic novels or memoirs read so quickly and it just gives you that sense of accomplishment and even then it's like I don't have to if I don't have if I only have 10 minutes to read I can get through many pages in a graphic book really quickly and it's, again, it's that sense of accomplishment. It makes me feel like, okay, I'm really enjoying this. I can keep reading some more and I can pick it up later and read for another five or 10 minutes. And that's, that's really worked for me. Read a mystery. Mysteries are awesome for sucking you in and getting you really into the story, getting you into the setting. Just, I, I love them. Or a mystery or a thriller or a crime novel. Something that you have to you're not going to find out the resolution to till the end and you know it's going to be there. So it's like, I have to keep reading. I have to keep reading. This is A Rip Through Time by Kelly Armstrong. And this also has some fantasy elements to it. I love this book. It was so fun. Mystery, fantasy, uh, Victorian Scotland, you know, the setting, totally outside of reality. And that's what this book was for me. And I had so much fun reading it. Such a great reading experience. And I think I read it in a couple of days um, when I didn't have a lot of time. But I just loved that experience. It was so good. The last one is pick up a book from your childhood or read a middle grade novel or read something that you loved as a child or a young person and 
um, see if it brings back the same emotions. This is Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. And this is a super old copy that I bought myself that uh, bought it at a used bookshop and they had put this protective cover on it. And I'm a sucker for Mylar covers. I don't know why, but I am. So I picked this one up, but this is a favorite book from childhood. I I don't know how many times I read this book because when I was a, a child, I read it almost every time I was sick at home and couldn't go to school, I would read the book cover to cover. And if I was home for a week, I would read it probably every day. So <laughs> it's it's just perfect to go back to something that you loved so long ago and to enjoy it, to and especially this book, just to enjoy the the lunacy and the fantasy and the language and uh, the illustrations. This is one of those with the classic illustrations in it. So yeah, any book from childhood. I mean, there are so many others that I read. Um, ironically, I read Little Women a ways back and just did not like it as much as I did when I was in middle school. <laughs> so I don't know. So those are kind of the tricks and strategies that I've used lately. Um, again, you know what? I keep saying again in my videos, I got to get out of that habit. But I did say before, go easy on yourself. You know, don't make reading compulsory or mandatory. Don't do that. Find something good. Pick, pick a book from any of these topics that I talked about. Pick something fun and exciting and if you like mysteries, grab a good one. There's so many great series. There's so many great standalone mysteries out there. Pick up an Agatha Christie. Those are often short. Something that is going to be fun. And pick up a romance. There's some great contemporary romances. Um, so many. So And those are really fun to read. And it's like, it's not fantasy, but it kind of pulls you out of, you know, the, the everyday ho-hum, humdrum, just grind of some of the everyday stuff that we all deal with. And a lot of these types of books can knock you out of your slump or knock you out of a bad mood or knock you out of an unpleasant situation. If you just, you know, if you had that, those few moments that you can fit in some reading. And for me, reading is therapeutic. It's, it's peaceful and fun and just something that I'm so passionate about. The story, the language, all of it. A beautiful book. Pick up a book that's beautiful and read that. There's so many things you could try. So in my, you know, month or so of distraction, these are the things that I'm kind of leaning on and uh, will continue to. And especially because it's all so fun. That's the best part about it. So let me know what you think about this topic. Let me know if you've been there, done that, if you've come up with strategies for yourself or ideas that you can use to get out of your own way, get out of your own distraction. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.